Uh, hi everyone, my name is Gary Trinder. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And as Vesa mentioned, uh, this is another session uh, in the Teams Toolkit Learn Path. Uh, today, we're going to be covering how to add chat capabilities to your Microsoft Teams app using the Teams JavaScript uh, client library. So as I mentioned, this is part of the Learn Path, which is build and deploy apps for Microsoft Teams using Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. So if you've been following along for the last few weeks, you know that we've we've covered uh, quite a few weeks. If this is the first time that uh, you've seen one of those sessions, then there is content already available for you to, uh, to consume uh, because we've already started with week one. We kind of got started with uh, Teams Toolkit, how to install it and how to create a project from the sample gallery. Uh, then the next week, uh, I showed you how to build a bot um, using Toolkit. Uh, then we moved on to building tabs, uh, had a week off. Um, and then this week we are at the Teams JavaScript library stage. And next week we'll be talking uh, about how to deploy and publish uh, the apps that uh, we are creating using Teams Toolkit into our Microsoft 365 tenants and uh, Azure. Um, so week four, uh, this is where we are at the at the moment. Um, if you want to, you know, go and take a look at this learn path. It is all all live. Uh, if you go to aka.ms/learn/teams/toolkit, you will find all of the uh, the learn path information and and modules. Um, so Teams Toolkit. Just a bit of a quick recap. What is Teams Toolkit? Uh, so Teams Toolkit is a Visual Studio Code extension. Let's uh, go, team! Let's go! <laughs> Incredible audio uh, there. That's not throwing me off at all. <laughs> um, You've got Visual Studio uh, Code extension if you're a JavaScript or TypeScript developer and you're on Windows or Mac OS uh, and Linux. Uh, Teams Toolkit Visual Studio Code is uh, the, the tool for you. It's going to help you create, uh, build, and deploy your apps uh, much easier and, and faster uh, than doing it on your own. Uh, and there's also the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio 2022. So if you're .NET and C Sharp developer and uh, just on Windows uh, using Visual Studio, then uh, then take a look at uh, at the toolkit um, for Visual Studio. Although uh, for this series, we're just concentrating on Visual Studio uh, code um, uh, extension at the moment. So moving on, uh, just some prerequisites of uh, the things that I, I'm going to show you is obviously we need a Microsoft 365 uh, tenant with uh, the uh, the ability to upload custom apps. You obviously need Visual Studio Code for Teams Toolkit because it's a Visual Studio Code extension. And uh, because we're doing um, JavaScript development, you'll also need Node installed. Uh, Node 16 uh, and above uh, will be will be fine. So onto the topic of today, what is the Teams JavaScript library? Well, uh, it's a JavaScript library that can be used to integrate native functionality from Microsoft Teams into your own applications. So being able to reuse some of the things that, uh, that your end users would use on a daily basis, like uh, maybe a people picker, uh, lots of other uh, features in there. You can reuse these these components so that you don't have to build things from scratch. You can just use things that are already natively available to to you as a developer in the platform to build your own apps and make them more consistent uh, and and user friendly. Um, and as well as being able to use different components, uh, it actually provides you with uh, with with helpers as well that makes it easy to access uh, the context um, in which your app is running so if you're running in teams do you want to access the uh, the IDs of that team um, SharePoint URLs maybe in the background as well and the the library helps you uh, with that so how do you get uh, a hold of the, the library? How do you install it in your, uh, in your projects? Um, you can install it from NPM uh, or using uh, Yarn, or if you're not using the package manager at all, um, you can simply reference the, the JavaScript file from the Office CDN. Um, in terms of Teams Toolkit, this is already provided for you, so you don't actually have to do the install. When you create a new tab project, it's already there and available, installed, ready for, for you to, to use. 
Now, the Teams JavaScript client library has a number of APIs, and they're, they're grouped into what are called capabilities. And these capabilities uh, are, are provided to to access function different types of functionality with within Teams. So you can see we've got a number of different capabilities. We've got um, capabilities such as chat and calendar, being able to use dialogues, maybe checking profiles or using the search capability in Teams as well. Lots of different uh, capabilities in there, but you, the first capability that you're going to start with is the app capability. And the reason for that is because you have to initialize the library if you want to uh, if you want to use it. So first of all, if you want to use the library, you need to import the app namespace and then initialize the uh, the library. Uh, calling the uh, initialize uh, function. Uh, so this is a, a JavaScript uh, promise. So you, know, you can use uh, async await with this. Um, now, after the the library is initialized, then you can actually start to use some of the uh, the, the functions on these capabilities. You know that they're, they're actually going to work. So a common kind of starting point is the ability to get context of your app, and you can do that by calling the, the get context uh, function. Um, and context is really good, and there's lots of um, there's, there's lots of uh, information in here. Here's just, just a few that I wanted to, to highlight. So you've got the ability to uh, get information about the, the host um, of where your, your app is running. So information about Teams, whether that is the web client, whether it's the, the desktop, um, the context of the team itself, say your tab's running uh, in, a, uh, in, in a, a, a channel uh, in a team to access that, that underlying uh, team information, the current user information as well, and also the underlying SharePoint site as well that, that backs that, uh, that, that team. So there are a few other uh, objects on there, and um, so do check that out, um, but it's very, very useful, lots of inf information in there. So now that we understand how to initialize the, uh, the library and uh, actually uh, use um, the get context uh, function to, to to get that that understanding of the environment that, that our app is is running in, um, using other capabilities. And um, so here is an example of using uh, the chat capability. Let's say we want to create a new um, a, a new chat um, from our application. See here, we've got a, a chat that's already been created. It's got more than one recipient in there. It's got some uh, uh, default text in there as well to send in in the message. And we can do that using the Teams JavaScript library by importing the chat namespace. And then what we do is we just make sure that this capability is actually supported in the host that uh, their application is running in. Um, and we do this just in case, say for example, you've got your web application, you might be running outside of Teams. If this is running outside of Teams, this is just gonna return false. If it's inside Teams, it's true then we can safely move to actually use some of the functionality on this capability. So in this example, we can use open group chat and we can pass in a collection of users uh, to add into the chat. We can pass in a title and a message. Really, really simple way of being able to, to add you know, a nice native capability into, uh, into your app. Uh, now, over the last few weeks, we've kind of talked about a support scenario, so I just wanted to go back to that. And um, so, in this scenario, it might be that you've got a tab um, that's helping you manage support tickets, and as an employee, you can see a support tickets in there. And you might want to start a chat with the engineer that's been uh, been assigned to to your ticket. Just being able to create a a simple integration by putting a button on a page um, that's able to start that chat, maybe pre-populate that, that initial starting message with some information about the, the support ticket and um, just helps streamline that, uh, that, that process. And again, it's keeping everyone in Teams um, as, as well, not have to, to jump around into, uh, into different applications here. 
So with that, uh, let's move on to to a demo of how all this uh, this actually works. Um, so in front of you, you should see Visual Studio Code on my left, and I've got a browser window uh, on the right with just a, a very simple uh, tab running in Teams. Um, so on the left, uh, I have already created a new project using uh, Teams Toolkit. Um, I've just created a, a project using the uh, the tab uh, template, um, and this has scaffolded me a, a basic project. Uh, and I've got a, a tab component here, which which represents the the actual tab our, our user user interface. Um, I've opened the package.json because I just want to show you uh, the uh, Teams.js uh, reference in there. It's already added in as a dependency. So at this point, all I did was I just created the app. I hit F5, Teams Toolkit, did all the hard work uh, for me in the background, and I've sideloaded my uh, my app into Teams, and now I can I can see uh, my uh, my tab, um, and I've got a development server running as well. So any changes that I make automatically appear uh, in the browser window without me actually having to to refresh that. So let's just take a look at the uh, the. The tab that we've got at the moment is very simple. We've just got a, a, a button uh, which has an on-click uh, event handler um, that calls start chat function, uh, which has nothing in it. So it, it just doesn't do anything. Um, so let's set up a scenario where I can, when I click the button, I'll get a people picker. And for the people who I choose, uh, in that picker, it's going to create a a chat uh, for them in in Teams. So, in the interest of time, I'm just going to copy and paste some code, and I'm going to put that into the start chat function, and I'm going to hit save. So we can see it's uh, compiling, and the change will will be made. Oh yes, Mr. Step, that was definitely meant to happen. Check the imports. There we go. I got ahead of myself. There we are. Save the uh, the file again. That will update. So, as I mentioned, you need to import the the app uh, capability for us to initialize the the library and get our context. And I've also included the people and the chat capability in here so that we can just check and call the is supported function uh, which which exists on all of these capabilities just to see you know are they both uh, are they both supported so in this case they're both going to return true then we're going to use the people picker uh, the select people function which is going to launch a people picker we're going to get the results um, in this case i'm just going to check if we have anyone who doesn't have an email address we're just going to just going to remove them from the list because we can't actually uh, send them uh, a message. And then we're going to use the open group chat uh, function on the chat capability, passing in this uh, uh, array of users and uh, a, a topic, which is going to be the title of the, of the chat, and then a message. And if I scroll along on the message, uh, we have um, some context in there as well. So it's going to tell us what what host is it running in and whether it's going to be on the web client or whether it's going to be on the desktop as well. So I've saved that. So if I click start chat, I've now got a native dialog box and I can just search for people in here. So let's do Adele and Nesta and of course Megan, can't forget Megan. Click done and this is going to create a chat. So it's already added the three people in that I I wanted, and I picked in the people picker, and then it's it's notice in here that we've got Teams web client in there, so it's pulled from from context, and then I can click send, and that's going to send that message. And it's also going to create the chat as well. So you can see really quite simple way of being able to integrate uh, some native capabilities of Teams into your app using uh, the Teams uh, JavaScript library uh, in just a few lines of code saves you uh, a lot of, uh, of hassle trying to, uh, trying to create all this from scratch. Okay, back to the slides. Uh, just to finish off with, uh, there's plenty of resources available. I'm going to 
put these links into the uh, uh, in, into the description of the uh, the video uh, when it is onto onto YouTube, and also put it in in the chat as uh, well. Um, just a reminder: so this is again part of the uh, the learn path. So please, if you're interested, if you haven't looked at it yet go check that out aka.ms slash learn slash teams talk it and next week we will be covering the final uh, module which is deploying and publishing your teams app uh, to your organizational store and uh, to azure um, as well um, using teams talk it and with that Bravo! yeah done <laughs> excellent Thank you, thank you. And Gary, really, really awesome stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. Oh.